In this session, we're going to start thinking about the different approaches to performance measurement, and we're going to look at one of the key tools which can be used in the performance measurement process. So, beginning with our first item for the session, approaches to performance measurement. What I mean here is what kinds of things can we look at when we're measuring performance? Now, I hope you're already thinking, well, we've already mentioned variances as a way of measuring performance. That would be a financial performance measure. So we've got our financial measures, which tend to be the first thing people think of in relation to performance measurement. However, when we're looking at performance, we should not limit ourselves to just financial measures. We should also consider things like non-financial measures. If we look at both financial and non-financial measures, then we are taking a broad view of the company. We're looking at its performance as a whole, not just one narrow part of company performance. And the reason this is important, just to give you a very simple example, um, let's suppose that a company has an excellent financial performance for a particular year. So their profits are up on prior year, and so on. And the reason why their financial performance has been so good um, is because they have managed to drive their costs down by quite a lot. Now this sounds like good news. Bringing the cost down increases our profit margin. Wonderful. But what if their cost-cutting strategies have been so aggressive within the organisation that it's made the staff within the company quite unhappy? So if they've cut back a lot of the extra little things around the office, like, you know, water fountain, uh, staff canteen and all the rest, perhaps they've made pay cuts to their staff, if they've done all of this and been extremely aggressive about it, by the end of the year, our employees might be extremely demotivated. And what's going to happen in the following year? Well, if the employees are extremely demotivated and it's possible for them to get jobs at a different company, I think we can expect that they're going to start doing that. Which means then, in the longer term, if, we, if our labour turnover increases significantly, well, we're going to incur a lot of additional costs then in the future for training in new staff all the time. So, we want to make sure then our performance measurement looks at non-financial measures like staff motivation, so that we can see that the company is operating well across all areas. Now, the different financial measures we are going to look at for F2 purposes, we will see something called return on capital employed. We'll look at liquidity. Gearing, and return on investment and residual income. Over the course of the next few sessions, we'll go through each of these things in turn. But there are financial performance measures. On the non-financial performance measure side, we're going to have our balance scorecard. Something called CSFs and KPIs, and something called value for money.
And these items are effectively what this chapter is all about. Now we're actually going to start with the non-financial performance measures. So the first thing we are going to consider then is the balanced scorecard. Now the balanced scorecard is a tool um, which can be used in performance measurement and it forces management within the organisation to look at performance from a number of different perspectives. So to prevent management from just focusing on financial performance. Now the key perspectives which are considered critical to the company's success if you like are first of all the customer perspective. So when we talk about the customer perspective here, we are thinking about how good or bad is the customer experience with our company. So we could look at quality of service, perhaps this could be assessed by looking at the number of complaints and the type of complaints we receive from customers, but also customer retention. Once customers have bought our product once or come to our store once, are they coming back? Are we able to create loyalty amongst our customers? The next perspective is the internal perspective. So this perhaps is where we would look at staff motivation. We might also look at product quality. In terms of product defects. So how well is our production operation working? Are we producing a lot of units which have to go straight in the bin because they are defective? So this is looking, taking an inward view at the company and seeing how well is each part of our business operating. Our third perspective is the innovative and learning perspective. Now, there's two key things we could consider um, in the context of this perspective. First of all, workforce training. And also new product development. Why is this important? Well, if we're looking at new product development, what we are seeing here is the company staying current. So are we going stale or are we keeping up with uh, product development in the market, with changes in the marketplace and developing or evolving our products to meet changing customer needs? If we look at workforce training, this is just again, well, this will contribute to motivation, I suspect, keeping our staff motivated, but also are we keeping our staff up to date with changes in the marketplace? If our company is not growing and developing and changing over time, then it is likely that it is going stale and going to be left behind by our competitors. And the final perspective then is the financial perspective. So this is our financial performance, but we must make sure we look at it from a number of different points of view. So we might look at cash flows, share price, market share, market share meaning um, are we again retaining our customers, are we growing the number of customers, so are we stealing customers away from our competitors, that would be good news. So again financial perspective but we want to look at a number of different financial measures.